Is that what we're talking about? Our estimate was just for, I think it was, we estimated just eight miles along the coast. I think yeah. if we were to pursue the horizontal levy construction, and this is what we talked about in our, I talked about this in the geo bond kind of funding matrices regard, regarding horizontal levy, but the horizontal levy is probably the most likely to be a multi-jurisdictional project because it'll be end up being long and across multiple yeah. city boundaries. And I think the Pescadero horizontal levy goes across like six miles of Palo Alto, and then also I think Mountain View or Menlo Park. Um, and so, so for the horizontal levy for this, we made an assumption here, um, which we talk about a little bit, a little bit because these are kind of prototypical projects. And I think our assumption was 50 million and six or six to eight miles across a single um, city coastline. And by coast, you're referring to the Bay Area. Yeah, okay. yes. you're correct. The, the, Bay. the, Bay. the Bay. Oh yes, the Bay. Yeah. Now, are these rankings meant to help the county decide how to best fund these things, or are they using this to help decide also which projects to pursue? Yeah. So, uh, I think I think the main I think that the county already has an idea of what kind of projects they want to pursue. Um, the, one of the main recommendations of ours is um, is for co-beneficial projects, and I think that is one of the things that the county is like cognizant of because that is a project type that is bound to get more funding and financing opportunities. Um, so, sorry, I like lost your, uh, the question. Um, the, uh, shoot, sorry, I just like. I, I was this. asking whether. Oh, sorry, so yeah, the, and the ratings matrices is essentially um, <coughs> um, targeting these three typical project types that they will likely pursue um, and they'll be able to look at them and set and know which um, which options they should pursue first um, because they will give them the like highest opportunity of either acquiring the funds or having funds that are um, a high percentage of their like the total cost of the project um, but it's not meant to tell them like you have to pursue these specific projects Specifically, what we were asked for in the project scope was just to find funding mechanisms and create some sort of toolkit. Um, where, they're, where they were at is that they had some ideas and were in planning phases for a lot of projects, but they didn't have anything super concrete. Um, so in terms of what we were actually asked to do, it was mainly to ident identify funding sources for when they get to the point where they're looking for funding for a project. And as Chelsea mentioned, the prototype projects were just for us to illustrate how these might work for different types of common projects in the county. But as of now, I think, it, like we don't, implicit, we don't explicitly say that these are projects that they have to pursue, um, but hopefully we chose ones that were relevant and are good guidelines for the ones that they choose. I think the other thing about that is that these specific project types, I think increase like the likelihood of gaining all, I mean, there's only there's so many different types of funding and financing mechanisms and like the ones that, um, like these specific projects give the county like the highest chance of obtaining funding and financing basically. Whereas like like Peter mentioned, if you remember Daniel, a traditional levy may be disruptive and they have a focus on um, green infrastructure as opposed to gray infrastructure, which means like man-made structures. And so um, that's kind of why we focus on these projects is to maximize the county's chances of getting certain grants and bonds and whatnot. So um, I should remember, but uh, as again, I couldn't remember your name, so I can't remember this either. <laughs> Mellow Roos, are they based, is, is a Mellow Roos tax based on the value of the property? Um, no. Uh, well, it, it, so the Mellow Roos. Is, is it a flat assessment? It's a flat it? assessment on top. It's a parcel, it's parcel base. The only bond instruments that can affect like, pro, like ad valorem property values, so like percentage of people's property value, is just the geo bonds. So for Mellow Roos bonds, and there are a couple other districts that we have recommended, but just aren't on the slide for visual purposes, are just a flat parcel on top of um, property tax, or, or, or on top of whatever else other taxes. Okay, so and let me just do my question, thing you can take, uh, Yeah, I mean, it's closer to a flat. Yeah. No. Okay, so but it's closer to a flat. It doesn't have to be purely flat. Okay, so here's the question. Um, when we think about this, there are only some properties in Man San Mateo that are going to be subject to this flooding. But you're asking all of the taxpayers to pay for the people that foolishly put their properties in harm's way. Right. Uh, isn't Ever that a political problem? Yes. yes. But and wouldn't it make sense uh, to do what some of these coast cities are doing, which is 
to uh, make the payment somewhat more commensurate or proportionate to the amount of risk that they've taken by living in that area? Wouldn't that have a positive effect of maybe pushing some people out of the flood zone? Yeah, that's, that's definitely a consideration. That's something that a lot of, especially the political literature about these projects touches on. And a bunch of our other, actually, actually these three sources, maybe Melrose District is the only one that kind of fits this. These sources, not on this, for example, for our zone 11, we have, a, we have like nine or 10 sources that we recommended, and we just included these three. But for example, we have a couple options that are more targeted towards um, putting the financial op like obligation on people who took on more risk. So like an assessment district, could might maybe work or some sort of parcel based special tax and you could hypothetically just levy that tax on people who live on the coast or who live closer to like flood um, risk zones. So that's one way to I guess more equitably um, Okay, but now there's another flood. thing, so I'm gonna But also I believe Peter that the mellow roost you can draw the boundaries however yeah. you want. So you could, even with the mellow roost, have it just uh -huh. be the people yeah. Were exposed. Yeah. Right. So right. now right. I'm going to complicate the conversation by taking exactly the opposite position and say, okay, so if we do that, now we get to East Palo Alto. So the history of the Bay, correct me, Drew, but is that a lot, more than a lot of areas, we have uh, some disadvantaged and mm -hmm. lower cost population next to the water because the water used to be very polluted. Mm -hmm. And so it's the opposite of what you find, say, on the coast. Which, where the property values have gone up thanks to the Coastal Commission's protection and the fact that you know you don't have the pollution problem. So it does raise this following question. There are some communities like East Palo Alto that if you went and tried to do some sort of progressive tax, you're actually punishing mm -hmm. the people that have no mm -hmm. other place to live. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of torn between, on the one hand, trying to penalize the people that can pay and move them out if possible or have them at least pay for the protection that we're giving. On the other hand, how do we protect the communities that, mm -hmm. for historical reasons, are right there and don't really have any other place they can go? Right. Um, one of the like responses to that is that the um, other prioritization factors that many like funding and financing sources have is for impoverished communities or communities um, that are considered like small communities. There, there are many like different variations of like disadvantaged community being of a disadvantaged community being preferred um, or as a preferred area for funding and financing particularly funding um, for example like a lot of the grants that I looked into have a like exponentially higher um, percent match rate so the percentage of the project they will match funding for if a community is impoverished so one of the like um, problems that San Mateo County is facing is having to make sure that there is equity in um, how projects are developed um, across different communities and using one of our recommendations is for them to use different levels of um, different sources of funding and financing and that will be one of the tasks that they'll have to take on for um, the specific issue. And is equity, do you have one of your evaluative criteria? Yeah, that's, that's addressing what Bruce is talking yeah. about. Yeah, so that was one yeah. equity considerations within uh, the other. So we had four criteria that were listed as yeah, go, uh, four. It's a uh, previous. Yeah. Is it on here? Oh, Keep going previous, back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about the uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so with our scorings, the ones we actually gave number values to were likelihood of funding or political, fe political feasibility and amount of funding. Um, equity considerations, so the other considerations bucket was essentially used to justify or even bump the rating up or down um, if there were substantial things to be considered outside of these four criteria. So equity considerations takes into consideration grant programs and other programs that have that prioritize serving disadvantaged, underrepresented, or variations of that. And I think none of the examples we went over in this presentation had this sway, actually sway a rating, um, but the other considerations was essentially used as a wiggle room for other considerations that couldn't be perfectly quantified like the other four. And I think part of the reason why we have multiple deliverables in this project is because um, something like equity considerations, it's hard to say like, Great for equity, bad for equity, like rank one, two, and three, because a lot of these, um, it's a very complicated problem. Um, and as Bruce pointed out, there's a lot of different conflicting factors, even within just singular mechanisms. Um, so that's why a big part of our project is also just 
compiling a huge funding compendium with all the information that we could find for specific sources and not assigning a rating to it, not assigning necessarily a judgment um, to, to any aspect of it, but just leaving kind of this major um, document for people to learn more about these different funding sources because something, especially like equity consideration, is hard to factor into like a rating system or a scoring system and something that needs to be explored further and is like an ongoing conversation. Okay, so let me give you a heads up because I've heard their presentations. Okay. So a lot of them are skewed on this issue. Uh, I think Derek pushed them to look at the lot at the uh, disadvantaged aspect. Mm -hmm. So I think those equity questions will come up. Okay. Secondly, bear in mind, again, because I've been to several of their meetings, there's a little bit of, there's some skepticism uh, from the engineering side on the value of the horizontal uh, levies. Okay, uh, So, you know, uh, and the other problem is you've already got some projects that have started underway that are doing traditional levies. Mm -hmm. So the odds are you're going to have some, mm -hmm. you know, mixed <laughs> system where, right. where it's possible. I, I see, I don't know how you do a horizontal levy next to the San Francisco airport, for example. Right. You have to build right. it out into the area. Uh, so I, I, it seems to me in some areas you'd be able to do that, in some areas you wouldn't. Mm -hmm. And there are already some existing projects where they're, uh, I think even in San Mateo, where they're looking at traditional levies. And so it, it, you know, that, that's another consideration. Again, I don't think that changes your presentation, but just things that you yeah. should, as a heads up, when you go in with them. And realize with the engineering, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the third thing they're is they're going to look at their presentation yeah. beforehand. Yeah, yeah. But again, I mean, they weren't. Yeah, that, I mean, that's very useful. That's yeah. a, it is well, it's just the background useful. information, yeah. so you have yeah. a, yeah. you know blindside there. Yeah. The other thing is that somehow in all this, we've got to factor in that there are some critical pieces of infrastructure that um, and, and that have to be protected, and mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm not sure what that means. I mean, right now you're protecting mm -hmm. property. With your, mm -hmm. but how do you protect wastewater plants from you know backing up? And right now they have a system such that if if they can't flow out, that they've got an emergency system that dumps all of this waste into the middle of the bay. And of course, the water in the southern part of the bay doesn't circulate as much, which means we could be creating a pollution problem that goes, you know, for quite a while. So, but how do we protect the airports? How do we protect the wastewater? Facilities and should that be a first priority? Again, right. that's uh, that's something they're wrestling with over there, but they haven't really talked. Again, it doesn't affect as much what you're doing because you're looking at how you would pay for it. Mm -hmm. But I wonder if there are any sources well, it, for infrastructure protection in, well, it, in particular that you can draw from. Do any of these sources uh, address infrastructure issues like the, you know, that, that I, uh, like the airports, like the wastewater your, facilities, etc., like the roads? Corporations or public enterprises like waste. Right. There's, that's. I mean. I guess a lot of these sources could fund projects that would protect that. We actually were speaking with. I think it was Deborah Furs. Who there's one project and it's, it's either Pescadero. Or it's the one that we, we included in our interviews where a lot of the project. One of the major problem projects was a Green Street. Uh, Green Street right next to a wastewater treatment plant that would filter in um, w wastewater, make sure it was filtered throughout the Bay Area, and make sure also there was some sort of emergency um, like backing for it. And so payment for that just came out of general like stormwater eligible funding and financing sources. I'm not sure of anything that's specifically infrastructure based in terms of wastewater treatments or airports. I'm sure that would probably actually lend itself easier to some bond issuance to support the airport rather than to support a neighborhood. Um, but I think they could they could definitely be like mixed in. Like that. Yeah, there, I mean, there's a potential for, um, you know, we talked about Facebook as an example, but there's there's a similar opportunity for um, public enterprises like wastewater treatment plants that are located in these areas mm -hmm. to contribute or invest money in the protection projects, and some of them have, or otherwise integrate, like the, the, or, the horizontal levy of Oroloma in the East Bay that was paid for 100% by the Oraloma Sanitary District. Um, and they're actually, they're using the horizontal level, levy in part because they're um, taking partially treated water and they're streaming it out through the marsh that's in the levy for like a final stage. So, you know, there's different opportunities. Um, and similarly, like with the airport, with the San Francisco Airport. So San Francisco Airport paid a substantial amount of money for a planning study for 
um, the whole surrounding area, not just the airport, um, because their assets are at risk. So, you know, I think there's, I think that there are definitely opportunities like that. In some cases, you know, it can go into the rate base and, um, yeah. Yeah, the stunning thing is that in a state where 75% of the public believes that climate change is real and that sea level rise is a real problem, mm -hmm. all we've done is had a few scattered planning projects around the bay, even though everybody knows that there's this potential damage and nothing's been done to really, I mean, you land in San Francisco airport, do you see any levees? <laughs> you know, and if the wastewater backs up, you know, look what happened in Texas. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That has tremendous implications for the economy, for the lifestyle that people have around here, but there's no sense of urgency about this. Yeah. Except with, you know, San Mateo is actually at the top end of feeling any sense of urgency about this, but there are a lot of areas around the Bay where there is no sense of urgency about this at all. So in parallel on the engineering side, the, the, those, those groups are uh, quantifying some of the, the values of these projects? That's right. They're, they're going through the building damages. They're looking at, they got the building blueprints and they're uh, looking at that pretty carefully. Yeah. Yeah. So that's their side. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the group is, I mean, they, they gave a pretty complete answer, you know, about yeah. how they selected the projects and all that. But, but basically, they're, you know, in theory, they're kind of agnostic about what projects. Yeah. Uh, what yeah. And oh, on the, all, on the, say, I thought you guys did a great job. Yeah. Uh, and really good <laughs> presenters. Uh, were you guys in my class last year? Yeah, well, I, uh, lately uh, I've been very impressed with the level of presentations I've been seeing in class. I don't know what it is about the standard of improvement these days. Uh, you guys are really good at it, uh, and I think have a nice logical presentation, and uh, you have lots of options, and the scheme is well thought out, and I think uh, the, whether, you know, the points, anytime you put points on there arbitrarily, you got to sort of take it as an exercise that is a little bit arbitrary in, 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 uh, in what the point score is, but I don't think you, you say as long as it's above a certain level, so it's not like you're saying I prefer a 4.5 to a 4, which would seem a little hokey. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I think you did a nice job of just saying, okay, it's high, low, medium. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, so I, I think it's, it's very, very good. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be curious as to see what they think and whether did they do any financial analysis prior to this? Did you, were you able to see what they, how far their thinking had gone on this? Um, uh, no. <laughs> if, if they did, we haven't seen the results. So you checked yeah. their website and there was no yeah. The analysis. students have looked at how other projects in the county, you know, outside the county as well, but they've looked at other projects in the county that have been done recently or that have been planning uh -huh. and how they're being financed and and they've either talked to some of the sponsors or reverse engineered, you know, okay. kind of what went into the financial yeah. design. Like, um, yeah, I mean, you know, like you can look, if, I mean, the, I don't know, you know, people have to leave or whatever. I know Bruce isn't really interested in this, <laughs> talking about it, so, but yeah. I don't want to keep other people, but. Um, well, you have three, but. Yeah, but, 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 yeah, so. All right, all right. No, I, I just think, yeah, so the so the the estimates on the cost of the projects you got from them or from the documents or what? So there were some similar projects. Um, so for horizontal levy was uh, I think it was Pascadero project we based our yeah. estimate off of. Um, or Loma. Or it was Or Loma. Yeah. yeah, it was Or Loma for that one. But something we didn't so so the same the, the office of sustainability didn't give us a specific project to look at. Um, so the reason we kind of made these prototypical projects was almost as kind of an exercise so that we could really focus on the funding and financing side of things. So that's kind of where the engineering group takes in place, so it's kind of the other half of the puzzle. Um, but we, all, we also did our analysis to kind of make it a little more concrete also. As we, in addition to the three projects we looked at that were prototypical, we did the same strategy with two specific projects, Pescadero and Plain Princeton Shoreline Management. Um, we didn't include it in the presentation because um, <laughs> it got it ended up getting confusing in our presentation. <laughs> kind of, um, like, yeah, exactly. But that was another part of our analysis was looking at 
two actual physical projects and looking at their financials and then fitting um, different recommendations to that. I kind of wonder if in some cases the, some of the distributional and equity uh, considerations that have come up, especially with, with Bruce's comment, might lend themselves to one more little column in a, in a future presentation. So kind of like as a, when you do the examples, uh, mm -hmm. and by the way, here's one thing about this. That, that oh. is, or maybe when you yeah. talk about the bonds mm -hmm. in that in that exhibit on the levy, you can talk talk more about the distributional aspects yeah, of sure. the different types of financing. And it's interesting to look, I mean, we don't have time to talk about it now, we'd be, we'd be happy to, but they have done some levies. Um, you know, they've completed one, and a refurbished San Mateo, San Mateo yeah. um, and, and they're about to start another one in another part of San Mateo, and they're about to start a big one in Foster City. And so, yeah, we can I, we could talk about how they finance so them, the history, and it. the choices that were made. And, right. but, so you know, Foster City made its own decision. Mm -hmm. So you've got the county, and yes. one of their problems it's a governance thing. Yeah, yeah. and we yeah. even yeah. talked so about the whole governance you, situation. Yeah. I mean, that, Do you want it, students? Which I know we've got technical oh, yeah, problems, but you have to leave. Well, well, Bruce, you're interested in government. No, so no, I, what's I, the I, governance I, situation in the county? Uh, you know that you learned particularly, like in dealing with. What issues you, you know, they wanted you to look at and not look at. Want to share anything with them about that? The relationship between the county and the cities and so. Yeah. I, I, they don't work together basically. There's like, <laughs> <laughs> there are, like various, I mean, like, lots of help. Yeah. So like this issue is, I guess, sort of like, about, like a lot of different departments having a foot in you know kind of this issue, and so like they said that in the past they found that like one department would be applying for a grant or like another department. I mean, in the same like county or city will be applying for the same grant for like a different project or something like that. So there's not a whole lot of like effort. There's not even really effort to do it. Like, and they discourage the students from looking at like some uh, county wide mm -hmm. financing authority solutions. Mm -hmm. In the in the status, I mean, you know, because you're interested in it, so yeah. So they they raise they they discuss this with them at the status update meeting. And they said, no, we don't want you to look at because the opposition right now is too great. And you know, they've given them some history yeah. to it. Yeah. yeah, the cities are not interested. Yeah. Well, I'll give you a little story. <laughs> and then I got to go. Foster City. Uh, Derek was trying to get a group to take over Foster City because there's no community that's more vulnerable than yeah. Foster City. It's sitting right there out there in the water. And uh, you know they're, they're right at the front lines of all this. And they've already gone ahead and decided what they want to do. So Derek and the engineer said, well, we want to come in and take a look at what you're doing. Yeah. And they said, no, because we don't want any criticism. We don't yes. want anything that politically is going to prevent this from going forward. I know you're well-intended, but don't yeah. come anywhere near no, us. No, exactly. <laughs> yes, no. And they're doing a general obligation bond. Uh, is that it? You know, look at some other ways of doing it, because it's a lot of money, and there's really, and it affects a broad, you know, in San Mateo, in one case, they did like this assessment, mm -hmm. right? Didn't they do? It yeah. was a smaller area. So it's smaller. Yeah, funding but for yeah. it was like a ten million dollar project, but for for an eighty million dollar project. Yeah. Anyway, good job. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm going to be curious to see uh, they react. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Friday, eh? Well, you yeah. had status meetings with them, and they yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah.